dices. Do a little more here. Oh! And now the squash is going in. I'm starting to develop a little bit of color on these vegetables. Get over here. Check that out, right? Little by little, they're gonna be cooking down. A lot of these veggies have a long cooking time here, right? and so it's gonna take some time to get them all done, and we'll be kind of testing the doneness through and through. We'll keep working in some seasoning on these guys, and then what I'm gonna do when I get a little closer to the end here is I'm gonna work some sage into these guys. Sage, we had some sage uh, last week. I think I used some in, uh, oh heavens to Betsy, what was it, uh, uh, um, some gnocchi that I did last week. And so I've got the rest of that sage uh, uh, and I'm gonna work it into this hash right here just to use that up, right? It's quarantine kitchen, I don't wanna be wasteful, okay? Next, I'm gonna take a look at my pilaf again. We'll show that to you guys. The pilaf is still doing just beautifully over there. If you guys can see that, I hope you can. And there is our hash cruising right along. And I need to transition into the next uh, phase here. We're gonna start talking about uh, some saute business. I need to get things kind of organized. And so um, that's kind of what the next stage is. Saute is all about pre-preparation. And now that I've got these things rolling, there's several things I need to do before I can get my um, saute station ready to go. And so one of those things is actually working on my meat. I'm gonna pull my meat out and get that portioned out first. Um, after that, I'm going to set my station up. There's a little bit of knife work to do, chopping, slicing. I gotta get a few elements out here to, to play with, and then I can go ahead and demonstrate that saute technique. By the time I do that, the rest of this mise en place here should all be coming together at one time, uh, hopefully if the gods are all smiling upon me today, okay? So um, let me give this another little toss here. And I'm gonna ease up on the heat. I'm probably at about six out of 10 right now on my hash here. Um, I'm gonna get that down to about five out of 10. Where is it? There it is. Yeah, just taking it a little slower. And I'm getting color. Again, the fact that I leave this alone for a, several minutes at a time, like two or three minutes at a time, uh, is what's allowing me to get that color generated on there. I will say that my pan is a little crowded, so there's a little bit of steam build up in there, but it's nothing we can't handle. It's doing fine. And uh, every time I toss it, I'm releasing a little bit of that moisture and I'm getting that nice dry heat that's going to give me that beautiful color, okay? So I'm looking at the time here, it's about 4.50, uh, so uh, usually they don't cut me off for another uh, uh, hour or so here. So um, we'll keep on rolling. Let me get another little sip here, because this is mighty thirsty work, I must say. Uh, Ms. Steinberg, good to see you. Uh, Stacy, good to see you. Oh, yeah. Oh, good stuff. Boom, 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 okay. So what we're doing is we're transitioning into the next phase. Let me grab the star of the show, the special guest, if you will. Okay, so I've got a little pork tenderloin here that I got. Um, it's uh, um, a, a nice little piece of meat for two people, okay? You, you, it's almost just like, you know, you can't go wrong with a pork tenderloin if you just want a quick and easy dinner, a saute or something like that, or I can pan roast this thing uh, uh, just all in one piece and then carve it afterward. I mean, it's it's a, a an inexpensive cut and it's fairly lean. Most of that meat is fairly lean. So um, pork tenderloin, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very tender, tasty little cut. Um, and uh, uh, we're gonna show you how to kind of work with this a little bit today, okay? Um, now. Let me toss this fellow, just one moment. I, I'm thinking I want to uh, work a little more fat into this, so uh, uh, don't be alarmed, but here goes another little bit of duck fat into this hash here. And then I'm gonna toss it. It's coming along beautifully, okay? Couldn't be happier. If this starts getting a little too hot and heavy, going a little too hot and heavy, something gets a little dark, hey, a little splash of water will keep that from browning, okay? Back to my tenderloin. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna touch this fellow and kind of unravel him. And what I wanna show you is, this is the shape of a beef tenderloin, only it's much smaller, okay? This is gonna be a little bit of a meat class here. What you've got here is you've got this long body. Let's, 
and, and it's, it's got kind of a, a head attached to the top of it. It looks like things in nature. We'll just call it a polywog today, okay? Um, but uh, uh, around this polywog's head, you're going to see this sheath of um, uh, uh, connective tissue that we call elastin tissue. Now, this elastin tissue does not cook off, and so we, we want to remove that. And when you're buying big old beef tenderloins, they're like sheathed in that stuff, and the butcher has already taken that stuff off of there for you, okay? Um, so I'm going to kind of show you how that works, just on kind of a tiny little small scale here, how they get that off. And then if you ever have these, these sheaths of connective tissue on the outside of a muscle, you'll be able, you'll know what to do to get that off, okay? So I'm going to lay this on down. It's right next to my stove. Don't get freaked out. It's just kind of what it is. I'm going to wash hands real quick. Again. And I'm gonna to toss this, because this is my last chance for a minute. It's looking beautiful. It's got that extra fat in there. It's all shiny now. Oh, uh, it's beautiful. Okay, so um, next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna get a special knife. Let me show you this. And take a note, you can kind of, I'm hoping you can kind of see this uh, little silver skin that we call it, this silvery skin here. We need to get that off. And I did have a knife for this. Where did I put that? There it is. So. When you're in a butcher shop, this is the type of knife that you'll see uh, for this kind of work. Um, what we want to do is we want to get underneath that little sheath of skin. And this is such a small little muscle, I need to kind of uh, um, stick it to the board so it doesn't lift off, right? But the first little thing a butcher will do to get that little sheath off is they go underneath that muscle about a half inch from the edge there. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but I'm going underneath and I'm coming out the other side. And then what I do is I just kind of cut out, and what I did is I made a little tab right there, okay? And that tab is important. What you wanna do is you wanna grab that tab now, and again, I'm gonna stick it to the board here because it's real small, and you wanna pull that knife along the tab. Notice it's a long, smooth stroke, and I'm pulling that tab straight out. If I, put the, if I pull the tab up like this, my knife will cut right through it. So you're going straight down, and you do long, smooth strokes to get that piece of um, silver skin, that elastin tissue off the surface. I'll do it again. Make a tab, and then I pull on that tab. I'm angling my knife slightly upward here, and I'm pulling those strings out, basically. Now, there's some of that connective tissue diving down in deep and a little bit of fat there. I'm not gonna go chasing after that. The poor thing's head will fall off. But I do have some more of that elastin tissue right there. I'm gonna lose a little piece of meat here to get this off, but it's a good little demonstration here. Again, this is exactly what a cow's tenderloin looks like. A lamb's tenderloin is really, really little. You're doing all this same stuff, okay? I got a really big tab to hang on to there. I'm gonna angle my knife upward, you guys see that? And then I get to the edge, it's diving down under this layer of meat here. Now I'm gonna lift it up and cut. I don't wanna go diving down into that right there. I've got a little piece of fat right there. I don't mind fat, that'll cook off. A little more of that connective tissue. Here we go, and zip, and it's gone. That looks like fat to me. I'm gonna leave that alone. Any fat is my friend, in my opinion, so I leave that alone. And there's my cleaned tenderloin. But what I wanna do, I can smell my pans getting a little hot. Hold on, guys. I'm just gonna hit it with a little water. Kind of slow things down. And I'll get back to this uh, pork tenderloin here. There we go. Those veggies are still cruising along. I got a little color on them, but they're looking good. That's kind of what I wanted. I do want color. I just put in this tiny little bit of water. That's going to evaporate out there in about a, out of there in about a minute, and my veggies are going to go back to frying here. You'll you'll hear it start sizzling again. I'm going to check my peel off, and it's cruising right along. No worries there, mate. Not at all. I think I will just turn it around and cook it on the other side, though. So I'm going to do this, and we'll check that again. It's cooking over on that side of the pot now. Okay, back to my uh, pork tenderloin. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break this into medallions that I can saute up, okay? This is a saute lesson, ultimately. So I'm cutting them into little filet mignons, basically, that I'm gonna pound out. 
into what we might call a medallion or a, really a scallopini. Okay? But yeah, they look like little pork filet mignons. That's exactly what a filet mignon would be off of a cow. There's another one. And then I got kind of an oddball piece here, and I usually just kind of give that a little fold and then kind of butterfly that back in so it stays flat. And I've got a little butterfly piece right there, okay? Um, I'm not gonna cook them like this. I'm gonna show you how to pound these guys out really quick, so that'll be the next step. Let me uh, move these for a second. And all of that little pork, that's going into my next stock pot. All those pork bits. So here we go, my uh, medallions, or my little fillets, pork fillets, going onto a plate for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab a little plastic wrap. Usually I like to bring the wrap to the table, but uh, I don't have any room today. And we're gonna lay plastic down first. I'm gonna lay down just a little salt and pepper, okay? It looks like so. I'm just laying it right down. And why not, just add a little pepper in the mix. Checking my uh, peel off. It's cruising right along, and then it's cooking in another spot. Back to my uh, plastic. Lay them on down. A little space in between, right? Because they're gonna spread. These aren't gonna be very hard to, uh, to pound, I'll tell you. Rinsing off in between. And another piece of plastic wrap. Restaurant plastic wrap is amazing stuff. Sad that we use so much of it though. I'm uh, flattening, flattening those uh, medallions. And really, these things, it's just gonna, I'm gonna have to hit them like twice maybe, okay? They're gonna flatten out really simply, okay? I'm not gonna use the rough side of the mallet, I'm gonna use the flat side here. If you don't have a mallet, a small saute pan will work, and it's just gonna be a couple of smacks here. Okay, and I feel it with my hand when I do it. Little baby taps, okay? I'm looking for, you know, what is that? About a half inch thick, no more than that. I don't wanna pound it any more than that. I'm looking for medium on these guys. So I get them too thin, and uh, you're just gonna overcook them. And so again, I just feel them all. There's a little high spot right there. And now they're all pretty even. I'm liking that. And these guys are all wrapped up and ready to go. I'm gonna set them aside just like this. They're marinated or they're seasoned on one side. I'll season up the other side. But for now, I'm just rolling them up and I'm gonna set them aside for later. There they are, into the box. I said it earlier, um, saute is, is a lot of setup ahead of time. It's like fast food. You get everything all set up and ready to go. And then, you know, later on, if you're having a party, people are coming over, you serve them cocktail hour, you say hi, you tell a couple of jokes, you looked all suave and cool. And then you run back in the kitchen and it's like five to 10 minutes to put dinner for eight together, just like that, because everything's all cut and pounded and laid out and everything. Um, and then you're, the next thing you know, you're, you're walking out with this dinner for eight and your guests are amazed, right? And so uh, uh, that's one of the things that I love about this saute. It's all set up ahead of time. It's fast food, if you think about it. I'm gonna wash my cutting board really well. We gotta clean up everything and sanitize. Uh, we are getting into uh, setting up my saute station next. I got a couple more things to cut and then we can start rolling you through the method for saute. It's gonna be awesome. It's the end of the world as we know it. Now the end of the world as we know it.